Now, when we think of China, we think of, well, they're not a Christian country. They're into Taoism. They're into Confucianism. They're into Buddhism. That's what we think, yeah? And the Chinese think, well, Christianity is an American religion. You know, Christianity is George W. Bush. That's what they think. Or they think, well, Christianity is Jewish. But it's not Chinese. This is how the modern Chinese person thinks. Because you go to China today and it's predominantly these religions. But I just want to put this to you. Those three religions I've just mentioned emerged into China around 500 or 600 BC. And I want to ask you this. What sort of god were they worshipping for the first 2,000 years of their civilization? What sort of god were they worshipping from 2500 BC to 500 BC? If those three religions that make China so well known today did not arise until 500 BC. Now when Moses was crossing the Red Sea with the children of Israel and going through the wilderness experience for 40 years and then Joshua took over and they entered the promised land while all that was going on the Shang dynasty was alive and well in China. The Shang dynasty is the first dynasty with actual records and documents. So while Moses and Joshua were there, the Chinese were doing this. And Confucius tells us in his five classics, and Sima Chen, the great Chinese historian, tells us in his historical records, the greatest Chinese historian of Chinese history is Sima Chen. And he says that the Shang people worshipped a god called Shang Di. Di just means emperor. Di just means king of kings. They worshipped Emperor Shang. So when you see the word Di, it means supreme being, supreme god, supreme king. And this is what the Chinese letter for Shang Di looks like. They didn't believe in images. They didn't believe in statues of their god. It was all forbidden. They knew it was wrong. But they had a letter for Shangdi. And the word for God or heaven is Tien. And Tien looks like that. And Sima Chen tells us, the greatest historian of Chinese history, that Shangdi is another name for Tien. Any Chinese people here today? Am I pronouncing this right? It's not Tian. That's how the Australians would say it. It's Tian. And Shangdi is another name for Tian. And Tian looks like this. And if I take the top piece off, the word becomes Da, which means anything that is very big is Da. The universe is Da. The sun is Da. A constellation is da. But when you add that horizontal piece on top, whenever you see that in Chinese, and it's the top uppermost horizontal stroke, it means the highest of the high of the high. The word becomes tian, and it's the Chinese letter for God or heaven, and it means that tian is bigger and way above anything else that's big. So Tien and Shangdi are the same. And in their thinking, their God was way above anything that they knew of in nature or in the universe. Now we say, oh my God, when something dramatic happens. The typhoon in the Philippines, oh my God. The Chinese say, Tiena. Oh my God, Tiena. The Taiwanese say Tiena. So to them, to the Chinese, Tien is the most high God. And the Bible says, blessed be the most high God. 
and it uses that term 11 times. All the Chinese had that term already. Shangdi is another name for Tian. The spirits do not have two lords, says the historical records. They did not believe in multiple gods, like most pagans. They believed in one god. Most pagans had multiple gods. The Chinese believed in one God. The Bible says the Lord our God is one. So the Jewish people and the Hebrew people were worshipping Yahweh. The Bible is about Yahweh, Jehovah. The Chinese people were worshipping Shangdi or Sangtian. How do we know these are the same? How can we be absolutely sure that Yahweh of the Bible is the same as Shang Tien of the Chinese? Now Confucius unconfuses the whole issue. And in his five volume Chinese classics of poetry, there are 175 recitations to Shang Di. I'm not going to read them all. We'll be here till five. But here are four of them. These are extracts from the Confucius classics of poetry where he's referring to Shangdi. Shangdi is all powerful. Shangdi has all authority over nations. Shangdi is all knowing. Shangdi is ever present, omnipresent, omni, omniscient, supreme being over all nations, all powerful. You might say, well, so what? You've got to remember this, most pagans did not believe in a God of love. They believed in a God to be feared. And some Christians today still believe in a God to be feared, to be afraid of. The Chinese believed that Shang Di was a God of love. Very unusual for a pagan religion. So I've given you five characteristics that are in Confucius classics of poetry. There are 175 recitations to Shangdi. I've given you five. And they depict these characteristics of Shangdi. He's holy, he's righteous, he's eternal, he's just, he's gracious, he's faithful, he's wise, he's a God of love, and he's a God of mercy. This is Yahweh. This is Jehovah. They just gave him a different name. Now Sima Chen, 